You indeed raise us up. And this morning, Lord, you come and you hold us in your hands. Thank you, God, that you hear our heart. You hear our prayer. You know when we sit and when we rise. You stay close to us. Through the twists and turns of life. And God, we thank you that you do not let us go. We celebrate today all that you've done and all that you will do. And thank you that we can call this church home, here in this place. May we influence many for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <coughs> We've been enjoying a series around We Are, and this morning we conclude that with We Are an Influencer. It's our last week of We Are. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 15, we read these words. Maybe familiar to you, maybe not. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. So let us be salty and let us be a bit shiny. Any shiny people here today? Ah, oh, very good. <laughs> Some of us are getting a bit more shinier than others on top. So no doubt we have been applying sunscreen. Yeah. <laughs> Let us be an influencer in Jesus' name. Now as you think about an influencer, you might think of a teacher. Maybe you think of your parents, how they influence your life. Maybe a significant person in your life. Maybe a Sunday school teacher, a pastor. Maybe a neighbour or a friend in church. We are all called to be influencers. But sadly, our popular culture has hijacked the term influencer. So we're going to reclaim it today. I was looking at a definition of an influencer. And this is what an influencer is today in 2019. A person with the ability to influence potential buyers of a product or service by promoting or recommending the items on social media. There you go. That is what an influencer is. Well, not for us today. For those of you who have teenagers or young adult children or grandchildren, ask them on sometimes about what an unboxing is. And that will give you a great picture of what an influencer is. So have a chat to them and say, hey, what's an unboxing? And they'll be able to fill you in if you're none of the wiser this morning. Everyone's looking that up on their phone. Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. We are influencers. I read this this week. We can't halfway follow Jesus. We can't passively be a disciple of Christ. You have no idea how one conversation, one word of encouragement or expression of love might change someone's life. One word, one moment, one action, how that may move them towards the cross and to Jesus Christ. For us who are Christians here today, we can make a difference. In someone's life, for you and I are influencers. How did you get here? <clears throat> Who has influenced your life? Who cared about your salvation? Who cared about your spiritual well-being? Who walked alongside you? Who cared? Who listened to your dumb questions? Amen? Yeah. About what's it all about? 
So is Easter where he was born, or Christmas where he died, or well, what's this about that, or this, and heaven, and, and faith, and forgiveness, and baptism, and, and what, what's it all about? Who listened to your dumb questions? And had a great influence and impact in your life. Who showed you Jesus and the gospel message? These people have been influencers. And now, friends, we carry on that today. We carry on that role today. To those we are doing life with. To those we care about and love. To those that are part of our church community. We carry on that role and walk that road beside them. At times our influence may not be obvious. But that doesn't mean that a seed wasn't planted and took root. We were part of the process of moving that person towards a faith in Jesus Christ. We're in John's Gospel today, chapter 4. And once again, Jesus comes along and shocks and surprises those who are nearby and those he interacts with. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Jesus, she said to Jesus, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I will give you living water. This woman is shocked, confused, alarmed, amazed at this conversation that is taking place. Jesus re replies in verse uh, 13 to 14, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. She's more confused. Sorry, what are you talking about? We're getting water and, and, and we can get water and we won't be thirsty. And... Oh, that would be good. She's shocked. She's confused. So, so, so what, what? We pick it up at verse 15. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. Amen. Then I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to come here to get it. A person of shame and outcast. Jesus says, go get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you are right. You don't have a husband, for you've had five husbands. And you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. So the woman said, you must be a prophet. We are influencers. No Jew would give her the time of day. But Jesus comes and stops and interacts with her and influences her story and her life for the rest of time. And here we have opened the Bible and we're reading it. One encounter. He makes her feel at home. He makes her feel at ease. All the time knowing she had a story. She had a past. But he's about to change all that. So she's thinking to herself, this must be the one, the Messiah. I've heard about him and, and, and now he's talking to me and he, and he accepted me and welcomed me. And this must be the Messiah that we've been waiting for. 
And in John 4, 28 to 30, the woman, she jumps up, she's all excited. She, she leaves her water jar beside the well and she, she runs back to her village telling everyone, come see the man who told me everything I ever did. Can you imagine it? They would have known her story. They would have known her past. And here's this mad woman running through the streets of her village saying, come, come, come see this man who told me about my life. Come, he's different. He, he made me the well. And would you go? Come and see the man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people streamed from the village to come and see him. Let's go and check out this story. Let's go and see if this lady's words are true. We know all about him, her, but do we know about him? The broken, messed up woman. The one who was not welcome. Goes and brings people to Jesus. For her story speaks loud and clear today. She was an influencer. You don't have to have all your life together to influence someone for Jesus. You don't have to be perfect or have a ministry degree. All you need to do is to know who Jesus is and care about people. Care about people. It's not that hard. Care about the people around you and be salt and light and love and care and encourage. You don't need 4,000 followers, amen? You just need to care about the salvation and the spiritual journey of the one person who's in front of you. May you shine at your school, at your workplace, in your community group, at, to your neighbours. As a church here, planted in this street, we're not here by accident. May we shine to those around us and interact with our friends and neighbours. In John 4, 39 to 41, many, from the, from the, many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, He told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for two more days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. It started with an encounter and a will. But God used her. Who did God use? Not a sports star, not a celebrity, not some, some famous preacher. but a regular, ordinary person who wasn't perfect, just like us. Let us welcome people. Let us care about people. Over the last three weeks, we've considered Jesus invited the people Others rejected. Jesus invites the people others reject. Your past doesn't disqualify you. It prepares you. And this morning as we draw it to a close, you have no idea how one conversation one word of encouragement or one expression of love might change someone's life. You have no idea, I have no idea, how one conversation, one word of encouragement or one expression of love might change someone's life. That's happened to you and today you sit saved and restored because the power of Almighty God Use somebody 
somebody who took the time to care for you. God bless you. Amen.